What's going on guys? Welcome to NetSec Explain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform SQL injection attacks blindfolded for web app security testing. Okay, I'm joking. You're not actually going to be wearing blindfolds, but we are going to go over blind SQL injection. The major difference between normal SQL injection and blind SQL injection is that blind SQL pages only return a true or false response, usually in the form of error messages. Now, you would think, that should handle our problem, right? Well, not quite. Sites that are vulnerable to blind SQL injection don't address the underlying problem. They can still allow user input to be treated as part of the SQL query itself. So, how can we take advantage of this? Well, there are some SQL functions that we can use to slowly build up, bit by bit, the contents of the database. And that's what we're going to do here. Just like in the previous SQL injection video, we're going to walk through how to use this vulnerability to map out the database and steal user credentials. So let's get started. We're going to be using DBWA for this demonstration, and before we get started, we're going to want to set the DBWA security setting to low. This will give us the simplest environment to work with. Now, the first thing you want to do with any new application that you're trying to break is to get an idea of what the underlying source code looks like. Here, we're given only a single input form. As we type in a few values, we can see that it returns, letting us know if the user ID is in the database or not. This one's a bit trickier, but what if we tried our SQL injection testing string? Wow, it looks like tick or one equals one is in the database. Well, it looks like we may have a blind SQL vulnerability. Remember what we did in the previous video for SQL injections? Well, we're going to have to go through the exact same process, except we won't have any useful feedback other than pass or fail. Fortunately, we have a function that will allow us to check the substring of our output. Here, it may make sense to try and brute force the database name one letter at a time. We could ask, is the first letter A? No. Is the first letter B? No. And so on. But there's a much more efficient way that we can do this. It's called binary search. If we type out the alphabet, we can use the substring function to play the game higher or lower with the database. You know the game. Your friend picks a number between 1 and 100, and you have to guess which it is. Each time you guess a number, your friend says whether it's higher or lower. Then you guess again. That's what we're going to do. We start in the dead center with n, and here's how it works. Let's do a check for the database name. From here, we're going to copy and paste in our queries one by one until we get a pass. Is it higher, is it lower, or is it equal to? In this case, the substring is lower than the letter n. So if we were to pick the center of our left characters, we would get the letter g. Fill in the queries and try it again. Aha, we get another lower. From the left side, we split the letters again, land on D, and then we continue. Okay, our first letter is D. As you can see, this is the basic idea. We continue until we find the first letter of the database, then we go for the second, then the third, and so on. So how can we take this further? Well, we could write a script that does all of this guessing and checking for us, but I'll leave that up to you as a fun exercise to do at home. Instead, someone's already created a script that will allow us to do this much faster. It's called SQL Map, and it's not just limited to blind SQL. You can download it from sqlmap.org. SQL Map is a Python script that is capable of detecting and exploiting many different types of SQL databases using many different types of SQL injection attacks. I'm only going to show you the most general way to use it, and walk through the same steps we did in the earlier SQL injection video. First, we're going to need to use Burp Suite to capture a query to the database that returns a true value. In our case, a user ID that is in the database. We also want to keep track of the parameter name that the query shows up in. Looking at the get request, our query for one shows up in this ID parameter. Copy the whole query and save it to a file. I'm just going to call mine request.txt. Next, we're going to run SQL map as a Python script using the dash R parameter for our saved request and the dash P parameter for ID. Like in the previous video, our first query will be to find the name of the database that is being used by the web application. 
As it runs, it's going to ask a few questions on how it wants you to handle certain things that it finds. We're just going to use the default options by hitting enter along the way. Once it's finished, we can see the list of all available databases the web application has access to. Even if we didn't know already, it would be pretty easy to figure out that the DVWA web application is using the DVWA database. Okay, so now that we know the database name, we can plug it into our next command and list all of its tables. Awesome. We have guestbook and users. Now, what about the columns in the users table? Okay, last query. We're gonna dump the users table. Here, you're gonna wanna pay attention. If SQL map finds any sort of password hashes, it'll ask you if you wanna try and crack them. It has its own default word list, but I'm gonna use my own custom file, passworddict.txt. And no, we don't wanna use common suffixes. Now this is what I can only describe as the most matrix style of password cracking I have ever seen. It's just really fun to watch. And there you have it. We were successfully able to map out the database and steal the web app usernames and passwords. If we wanted to, we could try logging into each of these user accounts to verify. As it is, we already know the usernames and passwords for both the admin and elite user accounts from previous videos. So I'm gonna leave this up to you. In the meantime, let's talk about how you can prevent this. As you can imagine, blind SQL injection is no different than standard SQL injections. In fact, it's the exact same vulnerability with the only difference being how feedback is given to the user. So again, looking at the vulnerable query, we can see how user ID is in line with the query itself. Because of this, we were able to escape it by adding a tick to escape the parameter and have the rest of our input treated as code. The only proper way to prevent SQL injection is to use prepared statements. Using prepared statements, we build the query ahead of time and then state where the variables are to be used as input. Well, that's all I have for you today. For more information, check out the links in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.